but don't want what we know out there. How a person can go from really almost nothing to becoming a millionaire by owning rental properties. He would always buy these flip houses, and I just remember thinking, this guy is crazy. Why would he buy that house? In the past decade, there's been a huge surge in the peer-to-peer short-term rental market. Become an insider. So you have to know the rules before you get the game. Every second counts. So make every second count. Welcome to the Real Estate Jam. Whether you're just beginning or the best of the best, we're glad you're here. We will share successes, failures, and strategies for the action-taking real estate investor. And now to your hosts, JD and Melissa. Welcome to the Real Estate Jam podcast. I'm JD with my wonderful co-host. Melissa, hey, how are you? Melissa. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Oh, it was the best. Awesome. Me too. Uh, <laughs> um, we got a, a, a pretty amazing show, maybe a little bit different, a little bit less real estate uh, strategy, a little bit more mindset and, and uh, how that affects you um, and your business. Uh, today, we got a, a pretty awesome dude, uh, Ben Osterveld. Uh, he's an executive business coach, mindset coach. Um, he has previously ran a company, a uh, real estate investing company, he built it up to 61 units uh, in the portfolio. Uh, he makes his living now coaching and uh, teaching other people how to get out of their own way. Uh, ben. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Ben. I love this kind of mindset stuff. I think it's so helpful and definitely uh, I think people undervalue the importance of it for sure. Sure. I like to think of it as you can build the fastest race car in the world, but if you're not a good driver, you still won't win the race. But if you're a great driver with healthy emotional intelligence, good mindset, self-confidence, self-belief, you literally could take any car which is the vehicle, whatever vehicle you choose in business, and you probably win the game. So I think we start with building cars when we really should be starting to learn how to become great drivers. I think that's a pretty good analogy. Very cool. So real quick, just to to kind of break down for our audience, why, why they should listen to you. Can you give us a little bit of your background story, kind of where you came from, how you got to where you're at, and then, and then hopefully you can teach us something about positive mindset because we all need it. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, first of all, no one needs to listen to me. That's for sure. <laughs> I think I'm dead serious. People should be listening to their own gut. I think we're looking for too many people out there thinking that our problem is solved by finding it outside of ourselves. So right out of the gate, no need to listen to me. If you're probably listening to a thousand podcasts, there's probably a problem. You need to seriously <laughs> sit down and just start trusting that little voice inside you that tells you what you need to do and disregard the pe- good and bad opinions of people because you're going to get stuck for a long time. So don't worry about listening to me. But my story is uh, I'm an overcomer. I had a tough childhood, spent time in rehab, uh, uh, 365 days in re- 65 days in rehab. I, um, I went through all kinds of troubles and, and it forced me to look within. So I've always had this understanding this feeling that I wanted to live. I have something purposeful in my life. And I think everyone can relate to that. There's that some kind of little calling in your gut. And, and, but I found out I was a great sales guy. I crushed in sales, 250, no, was it $2.5 million in office desks. I sold, found rich dad, poor dad. And that was it. I thought this is the best way to make money. What was driving me was the inner game though. I had an insecurity. I had self-worth issues. My identity was tied to my performance. My dad's love was given to me by when I shoveled the driveway and no one. So I was a workaholic and all kinds of cool stuff that our subconscious is very well aware of now. And it doesn't control me anymore. But I was at that point where I grinded. I, I, I was winning at every level. I found rich dad, poor dad. I started buying property. I quit my job, which is insane. I was making 160 grand a year at 20 some years old, selling Mm. desks. And the president says, Ben, you're going to regret this. And I, yes and no, he was right and wrong. I ended up buying 41 properties in 14 months and uh, did a lot of real estate, had a holding of 61 properties. And I I had it in four different cities, staff, and we were good. It was good investments. Like we, we really did well and lots of cash flow and, Lots of equity growth, did some flips, but the buy and hold was our game with JVs. We had over 20 investors, but the crash hit 2008, uh, I think, and in 2009, 10, those were really hard years. We repositioned. There was no investors. 
as you know, you know, there's a reason why financial planners were unfortunately killing themselves. It was really intensely. And I was just a young kid, like in my twenties. And I just, I just couldn't figure out how to navigate that, but I, I worked it through and I got ended up, ended up repositioning myself. I sold some, I sold a bunch of property off. We, we, we held some property. I've got a nice little portfolio now, but we were at a hundred miles an hour because I hadn't, didn't know that there was another side to losing. And so, and that was a big, that was a big hit. Uh, was it a failure in some levels? Was it success in many levels? It's a very complicated process when you have a millions and millions of dollars of real estate and you have to go to all your investors and tell them that you, what you promised is going to be hard to deliver, super crushing to your identity. And so went through a lot of personal growth there. And long story short, I started coaching businesses and sales and marketing and business. And I niched out in coaching real estate agents. I feel like uh, real estate agents are transaction based, no matter what they say, it's transaction, transaction. Like I remember buying 16 properties with one real estate agent at one time, it was a condo going under and we were picking it up cheap. She probably made a hundred grand guys and not even a thank you card to me. And so when I started and I don't need wine and dine, but i tell you, if I made a hundred grand, you're getting a trip to Disneyland. Where do you want to go? Like, <laughs> like, I don't care. But like, there's no, there was no emotional connection to your clients. And the other area I found in coaching was that the, the real estate agents are so worried about the next sale that they forget that that client, if you could keep them for 20 years and compound all of those clients, if you have a thousand transactions at a 10% referral rate, you'll get a hundred sales a year with doing nothing, but there's not even that thinking. So we, so I changed the game. I, I went at it and I became rookie of the year as an agent sold almost over a million, $1.1 million and almost 180 properties my first two years and just crushed. And so I've been coaching ever since. And I'm very much into the mindset. Uh, like real estate's just my vehicle to help people. I, I help people get out of their own way. And a lot of times there's people pleasing, uh, struggling with honest conversations, scared of conflict, like real, real issues. The subconscious is really the driver and it's not talked about. So we're seeing massive results financial massive results when people start getting out of their own way stop discounting themselves seeing their own personal value so I'm, I'm all in i run personal growth retreats now help families now husbands and wives and kids sometimes it's all based in the real estate world so there's a quick and quick little summary guys hopefully that's okay no that's definitely a lot to to take in and, and clearly you've done a lot of with real estate so i think that puts you in a better position than a lot of the other coaches that we've um, talk to you to understand specifically what kind of stuff gets in um, a real estate investor's way or, yeah. or no, maybe not great. what kind of stuff gets in their way, but how they get in their own way, I yeah. think is, is huge. And that's one of the biggest problems. It's something that I personally suffer with. Um, and, and so I'm wondering when you, when you're looking at, at, uh, helping somebody improve their mindset, where, where do you start yeah. what, or where can they start on their sure. own? So first of all, what do you want is the biggest question that we need to answer. What do you want? Because what problem is we go after what we are told we're wanting. So in society where when we're little kids, right, the best of intentions, the parents have best of intentions. They say, this is what you do at the table. This is what you do. This is what you do when you're with you. Be kind, you know, be generous. Or when you like, there's so much stuff that goes on to teach a child. But how many parents are going, what do you want? It's, it's not a nurtured conversation. It's this, it's religion, culture, society, Democrat. Like I, you don't get, you don't get to choose anymore. You don't get that. These are Republic Democrat. Like, I don't know. It's what do you want? The problem is we get adopted beliefs and plans. We think that we need a rental property. We need a holiday home. We need to own a property. Are these even my thoughts? And so what happens is we start going after other people's goals. What if I wanted to rent? holy crap why would you rent in america why would you rent that's ridiculous that's the stupidest thing you could ever do you're paying what if you wanted that what if you wanted the freedom to get up and go you'd be against the crowd so the thing is and then when you're when you're worried about what people think and you actually want to get what you want it's a tricky game because well, you've got to be stood up and you got to be people are going to see that you're not following the crowd so i think what do you want is a question to nurture a true and that's almost feels guilty to want something like yeah. there's all these emotions that come up. How do you, how do you know whether it's what you really want or it's what you've been taught to want? 
How do you differentiate between yeah, those great, two? Great question. Great question. Uh, I start with layering. So in the course that I teach, it's called setting your compass. There's a process. And one of the nice, the, one of the th- cool things is, is this. I like to ask, like, it's a, it's a layering of questions. It's an exploration because it's not as easy. It's a hard question. I'm still asking it today. Um, I, I wanted to live in West Vancouver looking at the ocean. I'm here today. That took me 10 years, but I got really clear what I wanted. That's what I wanted. You know what I mean? Like it's in and, and this way, I started creating a plan by what I wanted. So how you do it is if you look at, let's even say one of the ta- one of the things I like doing, and this will be good for your investors. Okay. It's like this. What's your financial goals is a fun question. And everybody loves thinking about it. So everyone that I work with usually say, most people say this, I would like to have a half a million dollars a year. Let's just pick that number. Half a million dollars a year. Okay. And I say, okay, next question. Describe the day. Now you have a half a million dollars. Just a simple question. What does your day look like? And the day is like this, 90% of the answers. It's almost funny. I could show you the homework and it's all the same. It's like this. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd grab a tea. I'd go onto my patio and I'd sit there and I'd read a book. I'd go bang out a couple of deals here and there. And then I would, I would, I would go visit a friend. Like it's just looking at this going, I'm like, you don't need a half a million dollars to have tea on your deck. I don't understand. We have a massive problem. Why do you need a half million? Like just today, I was talking to an, a real estate agent and, and, he, and he's jumping into my course and he says, I want to make 1.5 million. I'm like, why? I said, if I could get you to 700 grand, but the life that you dream of, would you be happy with that? And he goes, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> because we think that the higher the financial money you have will equate to less worry and more security. But here's the reality, Okay. We're trying to create an emotional feeling, which is I feel insecure and I worry a lot. Those are the issues of emotions. And you can't solve that with amassing wealth because you'll still amass wealth, you'll be insecure and you'll still worry. And so we have the wrong tool for the real solution. That's the emotional intelligence. What if we solved the inner game first and then we look at, what our financial goals are. And so it's just a matter of understanding what this is, what's happening in us. So I'd like the idea of comparing your financial goals to what your day would look like when you hit them and realize you might not need that much. Now, if you want 10 million, I'd like to swim in money. Give me a freaking Lamborghini, I'll 10 of them. I'm good with all of that. I want to have it all, but not on the sacrifice of what I want. Never. Like I'm willing to live on the streets again, guys. I mean that with all my heart. If I had everything I wanted, I don't, I don't need it. I almost got divorced because I chased money for so long. My wife sat me down one day and we had tons of money. I was killing it. She goes, Ben, I'm just tired of this. I want to separate. I'm like, I was in love with this girl. And she says that to me. And I'm like, I've done everything for you guys. I've got the house. I've done everything. We got vacations. I'm good to you guys. She goes, that's not what I want. That was like the moment things really hit me. I was like, oh my goodness, I've already got what I want. I was playing the game from overtime. When you're on overtime, you can't let up, man. You lose the game. Instead, I realized today I've already won the game. I got a wife that loves me. My kids run to me. I'm impacting lives. I look at the ocean. So I've, I play the game as if I've won it already. That's mindset. But that's truth. So compare your financial goals to what you want. And how do you know what you want? What are things in your life that you're not honoring who you are? So I know a guy that started singing lessons in my program. So weird, right? Right. Like a real estate agent's like, I've always wanted to sing. One of my homework is for the next six months in my program, you have to do something that you're setting aside that has nothing to do with business that you've always wanted to do. It's like, what is it? Why not a guy that wants to play accordion still hasn't done it because he's embarrassed, but he's not living the life that he wants. So we need to, and it's not the accordion. It's not singing. It's the, it's the emotional growth that happens when you make that statement and you move forward towards something that you want that doesn't make sense totally. It might just be fishing. It might be, I've always wanted to be a go-kart racer. Why don't we start living today? We're delaying it forever. I remember once I have enough passive income and independent wealth, then we're going to start living. I almost, my whole life almost fell apart with that plan. So my thinking is live today. Even if it's 1% of your dream life, live it now. Like if, is it one guy says, I want to live six months of the year, the Koken, a client of mine. And he says, I want six months of the year away. Let's build a business to get that. I said, awesome. Have you ever gone away for two weeks? No. Let's start with that. So he goes away for two weeks. He comes back. He goes, yeah, I don't want to go away for six months. 
So test your goals. We don't, we wait till the end and you might get something you don't even want. So guess what? He doesn't want to go. He's now built an amazing business. He's getting close to a million a year and it's pretty exciting, but he also took a month off to spend time with his newborn son. That's what he wanted. So it's almost the same vein. What he wanted was the freedom to go away for six months, but he didn't want that. So it's about really getting honest and testing what you want. Start living today. Love that. That's yeah, freaking awesome. That is, that is great. Mm-hmm. So what do you think the biggest hindrance or the uh, the biggest pushback you get from your new clients when they're trying to identify what these goals are and identify what it is that they really want? Where, where are you seeing pushback or what they don't want to yeah. do? Why did the accordion guy not go <laughs> and take accordion lessons? So, What's the reason for that? Well, he, uh, okay. So that's, a, that's the relationship with yourself. Okay. And so I'll give you a a real simple understanding. I'll give you one that's that hopefully you can get a little aha moment for your audience and for you guys. And it's been life-changing for me. The relationship with yourself is still abstract. Like we could be able to have to see a meme, right? Gotta love yourself. Oh yeah. Like we don't know what that even means. Like we're great at saying stuff like this. We're awesome at it. We'd all be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yourself. Like no clue what it means. I'll show you. So what, what we have is we've demonized fear. So let's just take one emotion. It's fear. We demonize it. So what we do is we create t-shirts that say no fear. Remember that brand? No fear. Remember, yeah, you guys are my age, probably close to it. Maybe or no fear is an older brand. And if you think about it, what is it? Fight your fears. Fight it, right? It's like, it's like fear is bad. We demonize our own emotion. But fear has kept me safe every time I drive my bike, my car, I skate on ice, It tells me, hey, be careful. A deer jumps out in front of me. Fear says, push the brakes. And then I say, I hate you, fear. (laughs) I ask a question and I say, if fear was a person, what would you say? And know what? I have this in some of my work I do with them and it's a homework question. And they say, F you. 90% of people say, F you, fear. 90% have a have this broken relationship with themselves because if you're saying F you to fear, you're saying F you to yourself. You're just, it's emotion. That's like saying F you to happiness, F you to joy. It's just another emotion. We just don't know the role it plays. Imagine a lawyer comes to me, goes, Ben, you're going to want to get a prenup with your wife. And I'd say, let me take that in consideration. Thank you so much, lawyer, but I'm going to actually risk it and I'm not going to have one with my wife. That's the role of the lawyer is the same as fear. But we don't demonize the lawyer for giving us advice. <laughs> just, a, just an interesting way of understanding. If you hate fear, you hate yourself. Weird, right? So if we can reconcile some of these emotions, you'll see clearly. Because then you'll actually, be, you'll actually have advisors with you. You're not fighting yourself all the time. Most of the work I do is this kind of stuff. And then we see the unlock. Then the idea is, you know where we don't ever have to talk about? How? How do we do this? It's like, how do you lose 20 pounds? Well, get a get your doctor to tell you you're getting diabetes. <laughs> That's how you lose 20 pounds real fast. We don't need how. We got the internet. Hey, Ben, how do you do this? How do you invest? Like, if you had a gun to your head, you figured out real, real fast. And so I think, I think we get really clear on what we want. And I think we get out of our own way by understanding that our emotions and our, 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 what we want. So I, I hopefully that makes some sense. No, yeah, yeah, that was absolutely. great. Mm-hmm. So do you think that everybody can get out of their own way? Do you think that it's possible or are there some people who just won't ever see the light at the end of the tunnel or don't have the ability or capability to do it? So here's a love that question. So I, when I listen to you, I hear where I am, my back of my head, my consciousness, I say, where's he at? Why is he asking that? Where's it coming from? And it reminds me of someone that would look at it as if there was a destination. Okay. Because as a guy and as a, as a performer guy, as an A-type, we're going to crush it. What you do is we're taught to get to over there to that destination. I did that forever with personal growth. And all I found was more problems in me. The more I looked, the more broken I was. And I got nowhere until I realized enlightenment is self-acceptance. 
I accept myself. I yell at my kids sometimes, okay? I eat the double piece of cake sometimes. When no one's looking, I might slap a third one down my throat. Like It's just those things I do. Sometimes, you know, I don't brush my teeth at night and I know I should, or like, there's just, I just know that in my imperfection is where I found myself. I truly know who I am. And so the destination is self-acceptance. Now we grow from that. Knowing that, yeah, maybe if you're under pressure, I'm probably, a, I, I go into mean, not nice. Like we just have these things that you try to fix those things. You're effed. You're human, dude. You got emotions. There's things that happen. We got a backstory. Do you know what I lived through as a child? It's going to be tough to get rid of that because it's neuroscience. So I got to learn how to live today and accept myself who I am. That's self-love, by the way. So the problem is I'm like this. F, I, fuck, I did it again. Shit. Why did I do that? See, the problem is, yeah, of course I did that. That's what happens. See that if you start paying attention to the energy, that feeling that you get, like we're not even taught how to have feelings. It's a, it's a very wussy thing in my generation. Now it's a lot better, but growing up, you know, you're tough, man. And you, it's like, if I can take a, take a shot to the face and keep going, you're awesome. That's how I grew up. Tough as effing nails, man. But what happened was it wasn't, how do you feel? And so we don't understand. And then you know what we don't want to do? We don't want to feel bad. So guess oh. what? Plow forward, man. But then <laughs> that's what happens. Snap, depression, silence. And so what happens is the relationship with ourselves, we have to feel and we have to accept who we are. Then we grow and then it goes quiet. It doesn't go away. It goes quiet. And an old friend shows up called madness once in a while for me. Once in a while, it shows up and I'm like, Boy, that was an ugly moment. And uh, <laughs> I'm just going to understand where I'm at. Understand that there's obviously some, some things to work on in my life, but there's not a chance in hell I'm beating myself up anymore because that cost is too high for me now. Oh, I think that's, that's great. Super great. Super, super awesome. So now let, let's say that we had somebody that was listening to this, that you're, 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 you're uh, um, all the things you're talking about and you think, man, that resonates with me pretty well. Yeah. Where, where would we send these guys to, to find out more about you? How, how could we get uh, deeper involved in uh, what it is that you're doing and sure. the services you provide? He wants so, to send me. That's what he said. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I, I'm hey, that person. It sounds like this is that's, right up Melissa's so, alley and okay, she so to get on okay, a personal two, call with you. Yeah. So first of all, I've really strategically niched out in the real estate world where I help a lot of real estate agents. So that's 80% of my time. The other 20% is I run personal growth retreats. And this is, this is like people that are going to be, they're usually ambitious people that are usually hard on themselves that they know they're in their own way, but they want to have like, there's a, there's a three or four day retreat in one of some of those beautiful locations. And we do adventurous things. We get out of our head. And then I do sessions like this. And we work through things, very particular things that are holding you back. It's probably been, I've done that for now seven, eight years with a private mastermind. And it's just now I'm starting to open it up to the general public. And it's been some of the most powerful work I've ever done in my life. And it's life changing completely. So we actually, so if you go to benosterveld.com, you can see the retreats. We've got one coming up in October next year. It's a off grid retreat, Northern Northern off grid retreat. It's in this lodge. It's like five star off grid. So it's not crazy but it's just a beautiful place to get out. Like you have guilt to leave your home. That's an energy that you have. I call that a, I call that an energy leak. You have ambition. You want to do big things in your life. Not with that energy. It's you're, 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 you have a, you have a NASCAR with a parachute. So let's cut those strings off and let's just let you fly. But guess what? Your brain is going to tell you to feel bad, but you can look at it as an observer. That's just the pattern now. Of course, it's for that 30 some years of that same pattern, it's going to be there, but that doesn't define who you are. And we start moving forward. So the solution to all your problems is going to be forward motion. Yeah. And so if someone wanted to get involved, my retreats, I'm going to probably start doing more of them. It's the most fulfilling, impactful work. And so I, a lot of guys, a lot of business owners are coming through there now that husbands and wives, fathers, sons, it's just the most fulfilling work I've ever done. Like I like business. But when it comes right down to it, why are we here? It's usually tied to people we love, right? And 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 it's funny, you can make a million dollars, but if you're not happy in the inside and happy at home, it really, really cramps that win. You know, it's like you got a million dollars and unhappy. That's a real depressing thought because you used to think the money was going to work. It mm -hmm. didn't work. Now what are you going to do? 
And so that's why the retreats are like, especially for some you know, like real estate agents, I can help that big time. I help them go from hustlers, put in all their business systems and I work on their mindset and it's the ultimate hack and the business structure has to be put in because most of the guys are talking selling all the time. But if you can learn how to keep a client with systems for 20 years, you'll build a career that's amazing. That's easy. The, and the mindset stuff's where we got to work through stuff. So benostervelt.com is where everything, Instagram's Ben Osterveld as well. But that's how people that are not at real estate agents can connect with me as well. Awesome. Awesome, Ben. Well, we really appreciate uh, you coming on. I feel like we could probably go for four or five sure, more uh, hours sure. <laughs> working just on my own uh, personal <laughs> demons. Uh, but we do have to let you go. I know you're a busy man too. We really appreciate it. Thanks awesome. for providing Thank value for our show. Thanks, yeah, Ben. Thanks, thanks awesome. So much. Right, yeah, awesome I'll guys. send Have JD over to you for private lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an awesome guy. You got a good energy, man. For real. Love it. Yeah. Okay. See you. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Jam. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information, check out our website, therealestatejam.com, or find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Real Estate Jam. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email at therealestatejam at gmail.com. See you next episode.